Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Fran Bins, and I'm the CEO of IPWA New South Wales and ACT. I'd like to begin this morning by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would also like to pay my respects to elders past and present. We acknowledge the stories, traditions, and living cultures and commit to building a brighter future together. I'd just like to take you through the program for today's webinar, um, obviously in the introduction by myself. Then um, I'll hand it over to um, Aryan Renson to talk about the trial evaluation. Then we have our um, Q&A with our panel. I, Jin Lim from Roads and Transport Directorate, Glenn Moody from George's River Council, Luke Russell, Central Coast Council, Simon Herrick from Fasala, and Scott Gemmel, Black Moth Vision Systems, which I'd like to thank everyone for their time today. And then the next steps will be presented by Aryan. Next slide, please. Just a few housekeeping rules before um, we proceed. To ask direct questions to Aryan or the panel, please use the Q&A function. You can also vote for the best questions and then these will be brought to our attention. So the more you click, the more questions that have a higher interest, then that question will be presented at the top and asked initially. So it's important that you do actually, I guess, rate the question to make sure that it's addressed by the panel. Um, also to make sure you do participate um, in the poll and share your thoughts because you really get the value out of these webinars when we all contribute. And it's, it's always great to have a little bit of debate or somebody asking a question that we haven't thought of. Just before we uh, move forward to um, on, ongoing, I'd just like to highlight a few things that have been going on in IPWA New South Wales and ACT. Obviously, um, we've been impacted by the pandemic, like pretty much the whole country or the world. Um, however, we were lucky that we've had some breaks in between the lockdowns. Myself right now is in my third lockdown. I'm in the Northern Beaches. Uh, so I think I'm pretty get, getting pretty good at it. Um, but there was a break. So we were able to roll out um, our regional forums, forums and our state conference in March and April and May before this current lockdown, which we're very thankful for. And in addition, we were lucky to um, roll out the local rules Congress at Parliament and New South Wales Parliament House in June as well, and we had great attendance. Um, some upcoming events, we have our inaugural Maritime and Coastal Forum that we plan to hold in Coffs Harbour and Shell Harbour before this lockdown. Um, unfortunately, we postponed it, but there is a great agenda that has been produced and it's on our website. And there's a few co-presentations and the topics around Maritime and Coastal development, management, main, maintenance and, and innovation um, is really starting to gain pace, particularly with the infrastructure investment moving forward. So if you are interested um, in that event, that will be up and coming probably at the end of October, early November, if we can. I'd also like to put a big shout out that um, our state conference normally is run in November, but because we moved it to March 2021 from November 2020, we'll hold the state conference again um, in March and it'll be in March 2022. And this year it's on the 9th and 10th of March and will be held at Parliament House in Canberra. So put that save the date um, in your calendar because if we keep going with the vaccination rates that we're producing now, um, fingers crossed, we'll all be um, pretty energized to get together and, um, and have a bit of fun. So I think I think I just, you know, I think that should, hopefully that will come, come to fruition by March next year, fingers crossed. The other thing I'd like to say about that is local government council, and the people who work for local government do a great deal of amazing things. And 
we should be celebrating those successes, particularly in this time, but always. So I do encourage you um, or even speaking to your to colleagues to put in a submission for the Engineering Excellence Awards at the state conference um, and be recognized for the projects and the successes of those projects and obviously uplifting the quality of life in our, in our New South Wales communities. So I highly recommend that um, you put a submission in for the Engineering Excellence Awards. They do close on the 31st of August. Um, so got a few weeks to still put that in. And the other thing is we would like paper submissions as well. And let's continue to talk about modernizing and innovation that's happening within our public work sector and the industries that surround us. The next slide, please. Just do want to do another shout out too. Um, you know, continued professional development is key. I'm a lifelong learner. You need to continue to develop and learn. The pace of change is um, second to none in our industrial, it's like fourth industrial revolution. It's important for you and your teams and your colleagues to maintain the professional development and continuous professional development points. There'll be more coming out on the engineering registration scheme, but there is definitely um, a push to make sure that continuous professional development points are up and it'll be coming across the industry. So um, we usually do face-to-face events but we do have events online and we do have in-house and um, so over the course of lockdown we've still been able to do both or three um, uh, delivery formats so in-house face-to-face and virtual so please go online and have a look at what we have on offer um, and continue to learn um, and advance your skills moving forward particularly that of your teams as well the next slide thank you we launched the uh, road inspection manual through the Roads and Transport Directorate in the last few months. Uh, it's a technical guide um, and it's about you know, building better quality infrastructure um, around um, roads and transport, reducing the liability and how we really manage hazards and defects. There are some background and methodology behind that too. We are about to um, launch the pilot for the road inspection course. It's a half day workshop, it can be virtual or face-to-face -face, and the pandemic's probably face-to-face, -face. Uh, uh, sorry, virtual, and then also two e-learning modules. If any of you or your councils are interested in taking part in that pilot, could you please reach out to us because um, we, we, we'd like you involved and we'd like the feedback. Also, too, in June 2021, I'll previously say conference, and then in June 2021, we collaborated with Public Works Advisory to build the project management toolkit. It is a simplification of running projects. It's, it's geared at smaller types of projects. It's a complementary tool um, that's on our website. It's complementary for members. It's a great guide for practitioners or individuals that just need, who don't have any project management experience, that just need some simplistic guidance and has a set of tools and checklists. Uh, it's very simple at the moment. It's a set of documents um, and it just enables and sort of educates and guides um, people and teams or individuals and teams through the project management um, process. It's on our website and it's complimentary. And the next slide, it goes through four key panels. So just, you know, initiating, planning, delivering, and closing of a project. It's in its first stage. And as I mentioned, it was launched in June, 2021. It is currently, we're currently advancing it and it'll be a much more digital um, rollout of the uh, toolkit. But at this stage, I encourage you um, or you to tell your colleagues to go onto the IPWA website and have a look at the project management toolkit. And it may be some value to rolling out, as I said, those smaller type projects around public works. So, you know, it might be an advancement in um, the parks or um, the children's play areas or alternatively about advancements in the toilet blocks and things like that. So it's that lower level projects, but it's a good starting point. 
that's probably it for me. I was I was allocated a couple of minutes um, from Roads and Transport Directorate, and really you're here to, you're here to talk about um, the the evaluation of the automated detection of road defects. So I'll now now hand over to Aryan Renson to take you through. Thank you. Thank you, friend. I'm uh, very impressed, exactly 10, uh, at 10 minutes, so uh, well done. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, uh, quite excited to, um, to have published this, uh, this evaluation and uh, for this webinar uh, today. Please uh, put your questions in the, uh, in the Q&A. So we'll uh, use them for the uh, for the panel discussion. The evaluation report is uh, freely available on our website. The link is uh, on this slide. I would encourage you all to just download it, read it, um, and um, and use it. Um, what did we want to achieve with this uh, trial? We um, we've identified that there's this new uh, new technology available based on um, video footage collected from road and transport asset and machine learning algorithms to automatically detect um, uh, road defects. So what we want to achieve is really to know better, to know more um, about the network from. Uh, video footage collected by by council vehicles that already travel the network it can be garbage trucks, um, inspectors vehicles, um, any council vehicle that already um, travels the network. With the idea that early detection of road defects will improve uh, the services we deliver to the uh, to the community. And I myself I live in Indiana West. And I was surprised, I, I, I just got a leaflet from uh, my council last week, and I was surprised my council alone uh, fixes 9,000 potholes a year. And if you know the NOS, West, there's no high speed roads, basically, it's all urban environment and 9,000 uh, potholes, that's a lot. If we can detect them earlier and uh, uh, fix them before they become a real problem, that's potentially an, uh, in, a massive uh, saving and a massive opportunity to deliver better services to the uh, community. If you look at what, 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 what currently, um, what methods are currently available to local, go local government to uh, do their asset management assessments, we have the um, automated, the, the, the automated uh, the automated condition, condition assessment, uh, be it profilometer, FWD, um, um, uh, these days the traffic speed deflectometer, but that's only used uh, per, uh, only used every one to five years on main routes, and it's only used by um, one person normally in council once a year. The data is really only um, usable for uh, for expert users, and there's a lot of councils who don't do this at all. So they don't have any um, condition data. And then there is the uh, road inspections. Every council has the obligation to do uh, inspections and to um, and to know more about the network and the defects. Uh, it's very time consuming. And of course, the safety concerns because uh, people have to get out of the car and uh, walk the streets, the roads. Sorry for that. Um, so what we did, we um, we identified um, a few, and I'll get back to that. We identified a few uh, industry partners who um, who deliver this uh, this technology, and we um, we collaborated with uh, four councils in New South Wales, Central Coast Council, Blaney, George's River, and Kentry Bankstown. And we, we, we identified a network of around 250 uh, kilometers with all sorts of roads. So it was, uh, there were a few state roads, um, but um, uh, arterial roads, connector roads, local roads, every, uh, every sort of road uh, category sealed, unsealed. We drove that network twice and we had a, a, a smaller subset in uh, Reevesby Heights that we drove in various conditions. So we did sun, overcast, rain, dark, wet, uh, everything, just to really understand the uh, possibilities and the limitations of, uh, of this technology. 
we identified uh, when we started we had um, we identified uh, three uh, industry partners that were uh, suitable to include in the uh, trial black moss retina vision and uh, faisala uh, Black Moss and uh, Faisala, they're here with us today. They will participate in the panel discussion. Retina Vision, unfortunately, couldn't make it. Uh, frontline data systems, ro Robotic and EagleSoft, um, we only uh, found out about them after the trial. So we have included information in the uh, report. Mobile Eye, we, um, we identified them from the start. The technology was not suitable to include in uh, in the trial at this stage. Our first industry partner, uh, Faisala, um, they have a, they have a beautiful um, a beautiful um, uh, interface for the uh, for the users. Faisala is uh, well known in Australia for their. Um, surface temperature monitoring uh, equipment and it's for instance it's used by transport for new south wales to um uh, to, to monitor the risk of black ice it's used in the, in the mountains uh, for instance the blue mountains faisala uses an, a samsung mobile phone mounted to the windscreen uh, in a car and it collects video footage it's automatically uploaded to the cloud and a few hours later um You've got uh, you've you you have the information available, so it's almost a live database, and um, you can see on the uh, on the picture, uh, pedestrians and cars are blocked out just to make sure it's anonymous, and when you run the video, you can actually see the bars moving um, uh, in real time. Second. Uh, uh, is Retina Vision. Retina Vision uses dedicated uh, webcam, including um, GPS and connectivity, um, mounted to the windscreen. Again, automatically uploaded to the um, to the to the to the um, to the internet and uh, processed within uh, within hours. And just a few examples: you can see a pothole, a uh, bent guardrail. The interface looks a bit different. Uh, different instead of a condition rating, they report on uh, on defects. Although I must say that all suppliers they um, they they have they you can download the results in different formats, and normally they report on ten or a hundred meter uh, sections of the road. On the picture, on the, oh, sorry, on the right top. You can see one of the challenges. I get back to the uh, to the to challenges. It's the reporting is based on uh, on GPS, and GPS might not always be uh, as accurate as we're used to. So you can see that the defects are actually not not uh, projected on the actual road, but just next to the road. More on that later on. Black Moss, uh, a Retina Vision, by the way, it's an uh, Australian company based in uh, Brisbane. Black Moss is um, well known, uh, it's part of the uh, JJ Richards uh, garbage uh, collection business. Their system is mounted to almost all um, JJ Richards garbage collection trucks, although a, a standalone system is in development. Um, so the, the, the garbage trucks who already travel the network, all the data is already being uh, collected. And this is an add-on add service. And a bit, bit later in the presentation and in the evaluation report, um, you'll notice that Blackmoth is a bit earlier in the development than, um, than other companies. And at the moment of the trial, um, they only detected um, potholes. You can see on the picture, very high quality uh, footage and uh, the pothole is um, is marked and even the size of the pothole is automatically uh, measured the um the interface is um um and and i must say it, it feels a bit like with all the interfaces and the trial it feels a bit like um I, I don't think we fully utilize the system. So there's a lot possible already. But uh, Black Moss reports the, uh, the defects, they number it all. And, um, and when you click on the number, you get the, um, you get the detailed information. 
I must say, I, well, I am I'm really quite impressed with um, what the technology can deliver and um, how much defects actually can be picked up by uh, by this technology. This table, I don't expect you to uh, to read it all. This table is uh, out of the uh, road inspection manual that friend mentioned before. The road inspection manual is based on training material provided by Transport for New South Wales to councils who do maintenance on state roads as a subcontractor. Um, we took the, the, um, the specifications from Transport for New South Wales and adopted them for use by uh, local council. We've identified, I think, 48 uh, defects. And you can see that really quite a lot of them are picked up by uh, this technology. So defects, pavement related defects uh, are picked up. Quite a few roadside, um, roadside uh, defects like bent guardrails, um, overhanging vegetation can be picked up. Uh, some drainage uh, defects where um, there is there is there is just in 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 the in the drainage facilities there is um, a, a, a piece broken or not aligned traffic facilities like faded lines um, the, all all the, the technology can be used for um, traffic sign uh, identification but also for uh, order rating or the automatic assessment of uh, the quality of the uh, signs. And incident response that uh, can be can be roadkill, can be um, trees that fell over the road. Um, it picks, picks things like that up as well. So a bit more detail. Uh, I, I, I discussed the defect classes in um, uh, in the, the, the sheet before, but in, in the evaluation, we compared the current automated systems, profilometer, FWD, road inspections, and the uh, machine learning um, technology with each other. <clears throat> the automated uh, systems, the, we, we still regard them as sort of the source of truth. And if we could, sorry for that, if we could afford to do that on all our roads, that might be the best, uh, the best solution, but we can't simply afford to do it on all our roads. And only some councils can afford to do it on, um, on a part of their network. But um, that picks up all, um, all pavement um, defects, all pavement um, uh, conditions, including roughness, rutting texture, structural strengths, whatever you uh, want to know, but only on the pavements itself. So nothing on, um, on, on, on roadkill or guardrails or roadsides. So there is limitations there as well. Um, road inspections is of course it's only uh, visual assessments and it's very subject to um, interpretation. It's only it's also uh, subject to what uh, an inspector sees while driving and being um, call it distracted by uh, by the driving task at hand. The accuracy, um, uh, the current automated uh, systems, like I said, we we still regard that as the source of uh, truth. Road inspections are definitely subject to uh, interpretation. The um, um, uh, photometric surveys, um, they're really repeatable and um, with a good accuracy. And uh, later on, I'll explain how we came to the number of over 70%. I think it's actually higher and we will prove in the next phase what it actually is. Location uh, referencing. Um, we all know that the location referencing for line assets like roads can be really quite tricky. And with the automated systems, we always has, have a discussion about rubber banding things. So it really matches the, um, the, 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 the network perfectly. Uh, with road inspections, that's, um, that's only a road name and a rough location. Machine learning at this stage for the photometric surveys. At this stage, it's uh, based on uh, on GPS. I discussed a bit about the uh, coverage, the timing already, uh, but the main difference with the timing is that 
using photometric uh, surveys and uh, using council vehicles that already travel the network, you almost have a real-time database. Um, the cost, of course, um, it's pretty expensive to, uh, to do uh, surveys with Providometer FWD and technology like that. Road inspections is pretty expensive. Photometric surveys, um, that's really the opportunity to use a very cost-effective uh, method to know more about your assets. And I'm, I mentioned the users uh, before. Um, so when we when we prepared the um, the evaluation report, we asked the practitioners in the participating councils what they thought of the different uh, different systems. So green is Faisala, uh, red is Retina Visions, and uh, blue is Black Moss. Um, where the Faisala system is a beautiful, easy to use um, uh, interface. Um, Retina Vision is, is different, but equally uh, good, where I think that the feedback we get we got so far is Faisala, the interface is more suitable for asset management planners, and Retina Vision is more liked by um, works managers. Blackmoss uh, scored a bit uh, less, but like I said before, that's mainly because they're a bit earlier in the, um, in the development. And I think with all these systems, you have to figure out what works for you and how, you, how, how to best integrate it in, uh, in current practices. And where if your council uses JJ Richard for the garbage collection, this could uh, black moss could uh, be a perfect solution because you already have the technology and the video footage. But this is uh, you can see that uh, the systems were rated pretty uh, pretty well uh, by all the councils. So the conclusions of the uh, evaluation, um, the user experience is it, on average it's more than an eight out of ten. We did quite an extensive visual comparison between the results of the photometric surveys um, and, um, and, and we just checked it against the uh, video footage. And there was a, the, 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 um, it was more, more better than 90% uh, if you compare the two. Um, we also engaged uh, PMS to do an, a detailed uh, data comparison. That scored over 50% accuracy, but the problem was that the data was uh, two years old. And we all know we had, um, in, in recent years, we had a, a long drought. The drought was broken and it was very wet. And um, we all know that um, road operators, I think that's the only people in the world who prefer long extensive, extensive uh, periods of drought because it's very easy to maintain um, a road in dry conditions. The road falls apart in uh, when it's wet. So we will, uh, in the next phase, we will do a better comparison, but overall the accuracy is um, over 70%. The real benefits of using this technology and having more information about the, uh, the condition of your assets and the defects in on the assets, but you just have better knowledge. It's you have the opportunity to uh, improve safety not only for your road inspectors who don't have to go out that often and don't have to get out of the car to um, assess a defect, but also um, better safety to the community. The the earlier you um, fix a pothole the less likely it is that uh, people damage their car or worse. Um, and the earlier you uh, detect a defect and the earlier you fix it, the more efficient uh, the spending is. And it's real-time data. In the end, if a uh, member of the community calls council to report a defect, a council, um, a, a, a customer services officer can just go into the database and see if the defects is already known. Instead of always having to send out an inspector to uh, to check the uh, check the defect, and it's 
just the overall the risk uh, profile will change uh, significantly. It also comes with um, with some challenges, and um, of course this this is this this is new. It's new technology, and <clears throat> the first challenge is that it needs to be integrated with current asset management systems and current asset management uh, practices. It's just it's just it's just new. The volume of data in itself is um, is a massive um, is a massive challenge because it's a lot of data and you need to do something with the data. You need to manage it. Thirdly, the data doesn't fully meet the Ostrode's uh, data standards. It's it's different. It's less accurate. It's um, and it less accurate in location uh, referencing and it's reported slightly different. Um, and with the, at the uh, roads, um, local roads Congress in June, we got an interesting question that I hadn't thought about it before, but with the asset valuation uh, process, there is a risk because um, there's currently the asset valuation is based on um, on a lot of assumptions, and a lot of assumptions are very um, unknown. If we know more about the asset, and if the condition of the asset is actually um, less than the condition we assumed, that might affect the asset valuation, and it might indeed compromise the financial uh, sustainability of uh, councils. Just something to think about. Um, I think it's better to base everything on known information, but there, there, there might be a transition or there might be a discussion that we need to have how to uh, deal with it. This graph is just uh, basically uh, about the integration with um, current practices where I believe that uh, for, uh, for routine or uh, responsive maintenance, the photometric surface is basically all you need to, um, to, um, uh, to inform that, uh, that process. Road inspections will always be necessary because that's just a legal obligation from councils uh, to do. The specialized data like profilometer, FWD, ground penetration radar, uh, Benkelman beam, I think there is still a need for it, especially for the, um, for the um, uh, structural testing, FWD, ground penetration radar, and, um, and uh, Benkelman beam. But you only do it uh, project based when you, when you are. Um, designing plant uh, maintenance, whether or not it's a reseal, an, an asphalt overlay or a full uh, rehab. But I think that's where, um, that's where um, the, the sort of the current technology comes in. I believe that for councils, the provider meter service, the surveys is basically all you need because there is no council is in a position where they will do a rehab or other uh, major maintenance as long as the surface of the road is still uh, serviceable. So that's that's a quick uh, summary of uh, what's included in the um, in the um, in the, in the evaluation report. So I would like to um, invite the uh, all the all our pan panel members to turn on their um, video and their um, microphone, and we'll go from there. There is an, uh, a, a poll question on, um, on, on the screen, just sort of a, to get an idea if you think this could be uh, used within your organization. I think we we um, we can uh, we can get uh, started. Um, but just as a start, maybe um, maybe you can just quickly um, introduce yourself. We start on my left, Glenn. Uh, yeah, thanks, Arian. Glenn Moody, uh, Manager of Infrastructure at George's River Council. Arian. Yep. Hi, I'm Arian, uh, Research and Policy Officer here at the Roads and Transport Directorate. 
Thanks for that. Simon? Yeah, Simon Harrod, uh, Business Development Manager at Vaisala. Maybe you go first. As we, go. we go back to Luke when you're done. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Scott Gemmell, CEO of Blackmox Vision Systems. Can you, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, Luke Russell, uh, Road Assets Team Leader at Central Coast Council. Okay, thanks all for uh, for joining. Um, the Q and A is not flooded um, with questions. There's one question that we'll get to um, in a minute. But before we get uh, started, maybe I would like to give um, Simon and Scott um, the opportunity just to respond to um, the evaluation and um, and my comments. Maybe you start, uh, Scott. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ian. Um, as uh, some of you may know, at Black Moth, uh, we're helping to make roads and heavy machinery safer for everyone. And we do that through whilst improving safety by delivering value through enabling our customers to become more productive and proactive and through offering actionable insights from the data we collect and process. And uh, we're, we were grateful to be part of the IPWIA evaluation. Um, at our current uh, status, we submitted the potholes only. For review we are working on other defect classes and um yeah we're, we're building up a, a set of actionable classes that uh, councils can rely on and uh, one of the issues uh, pertaining to just the volume of data that i am touched on in his evaluation is uh, is having to deal with that that groundhog day effect of getting a lot of automated insights getting collected across the network, especially that we see across uh, waste vehicles through um, some of the initiatives that we're running across about 1,200 garbage trucks across the country. Um, we're seeing a lot of repetitive footage coming back and being able to geolocate that and group those defects is really critical to a robust integration into a council back office system. Thanks for that. Simon? Yeah, thank you. Look, first of all, I would just like to thank uh, yeah, IPWEA for um, the opportunity to participate in, in the, the, the trial. Um, yeah, I thought the report was very good and hope um, that, that the government authorities find it as a useful tool as a, as a first in if they haven't had exposure to this technology before. Um, we're relatively new in, in introducing the technology uh, in Australia. Um, as Ari mentioned, we, we are established, however, within the Rose community and have been out here for around 34 years, um, working with mainly the state-based authorities, not so much the councils. Um, but the technology, yeah, it's been uh, introduced in Europe and you know we have well-established um, clientele there and it's in widespread use. So we're hoping to sort of bring some of those benefits there. Um, I guess one of the one of the sort of top line um, takeaways that we've learned and, and often mention when people look at why they would use this is you, you get around about four times the data at half the cost. That's a very basic sort of line to throw out there, but can can be seen to be found in, in lots of different applications, whether you're looking at the pavement condition or broader at, at other sorts of uh, information around the road network. So, yeah, so look, we, we welcome this opportunity. We look forward to... Um, working more with IPWEA and also with, with the councils to introduce this um, uh, into Australia. Thanks for that. Um, the, uh, there's people putting questions in the Q&A and in the chat. If you could please could use the um, uh, Q&A, that's a bit, um, a bit easier than we can see, uh, when we, when we can see all of them. Um, there's a question about the um, I'll go with the more uh, the 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 most um, liked question from uh, sorry that changes a bit from um, uh, Theo. What what council based systems such as Tech One does the new information feed into? Could this be used to automatically raise defect and maintenance requests? Anyone wants to answer that question? Yeah, sure, I am. Um, uh, our, our integrations, uh, we're quite flexible in the way that we can integrate into councils. Uh, we can do it via uh, into, into back office systems like uh, Tech One or uh, 
Esri, et cetera, anything that has a REST-based um, open API, we perform that integration as part of the setup. Um, definitely automatically raise defect and maintenance requests could happen off it. We have a IA component to our AI collection, which is a human vetting stage, which helps declutter some of the noise that we see around false detections. We've seen um, through a lot of analysis, things like shadows of gum trees in the afternoon getting misdetected. Uh, those have a very pothole-like visual shape to them and our vetting service helps filter that out. So we could definitely get to an automatically defect and maintenance mode through filtering these this noise or the 10% or the 90% that comes out. Our mission is to not send people down wild goose chases, but to review that um, and where, where possible, where the AI can be further reviewed with our solutions is all the all the video of the network is captured at the same time and geo-referenced. So if you're not sure, you can always look at the physical video that was captured at that time. And that saves a, a traversal of the network. I think I think you're right. And the, the um, uh, all the suppliers we talked with, they have um, they have or an API with um, uh, well-known asset management systems or uh, you can download a CSV file with um, uh, 10 or 100 meter sections and, and upload them. So um, that is, um, I think that's, that, that it's, it's, it's clear that, it's, I think it's clear for all suppliers we included and we talked with that that's an, uh, an essential uh, part of it. Second question is about the, um, uh, the GPS. Um, the it is the the it is the GPS um, uh, for the defects or for where uh, where you drive, and uh, it's just a deep GPS or from uh, an uh, or from a dash cam or from uh, from a mobile phone, um, but that's 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 an issue where the. I don't think, um, but I'll ask the uh, Simon and uh, Scott question. I don't think any of the suppliers at the moment uh, makes the uh, sort of projects the, G the the GPS locations at the right spot at the map at this stage. Is that correct? Uh, I can comment there. So we, we use a combination of two things. So we're using a, a mobile phone and running an app in that, and we're using the, the GPS information um, that comes from the mobile phone to attach that to the videos which are uploaded. Um, in addition, we have the shape file for the network loaded into the, our portal. So that gives the information on chainage and the road identification. So we do have a process where we snap the um, locations that are presented by GPS onto the roads so that they're projected within the portal actually on the roadways and we, we don't have that error there um, but it is true that we don't uh, in terms of gps accuracy we're limited by the accuracy that's in the phone um, and there are other more accurate systems in terms of gps which may be used on the you know the traditional instrumented vehicle type systems so it's something that hasn't really presented uh, significant issues in using the system to date oh uh, yeah can i add in um we, uh, our, our cameras, since we develop our solution, we manufacture our own cameras, we calibrate the optics of manufacture with the fisheye to get a sense of perception in the environment around us. And that enables us to measure the size of potholes. And to be able to do that, we can transpose our connected GPS position. We understand the position of the cameras on the machine and we can project that position on the ground. Based, of our, based with our knowledge of the optics in the lenses that we contain. So, um, yeah, but our, our position of the pothole uh, can be determined from the uh, position of the camera. Yeah, I think, I, think it's, I think it's really important for us all to understand that, that the technology development is, is progressing very quickly. And this is a whole new, a whole sort of AI world is, um, it's, it's all so quick. Today is already history. Uh, so um, this, it, it will all change um, quickly. Um, there was a question from uh, Rhys for, uh, for the councils. From a 
procurement perspective, is the technology required as part of waste collection contract? Or is there simply a provision for the mounting of cameras at the automated defect service? And the automated defect service is procured separately. Anything you can say about that, Glenn? Uh, no, unfortunately, I, I don't know too much about our, our waste contract and how that's put together with this with this service. Sorry. Yes, similarly, um, I'm not too across the, the waste services contract, um, but I do understand that some of the applications are quite quite um, small. I suppose Vaisal is a phone um, product or phone app, uh, which is quite sort of uh, flexible in terms of the, the equipment you can attach it to. So I don't think um, they're all sort of specifically designed for, for garbage trucks, et cetera. So you could use it on um, asset inspector vehicles, um, complementary to their uh, their inspection. So. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, Matt Sorensen asked a question about uh, pricing. Uh, Simon already mentioned um, four times the amount of data for half the cost. Um, I think I think in terms of pricing, um, I would prefer not to discuss it in too much detail today because I think the pricing will come down uh, uh, fairly quickly. What I think is the challenge for suppliers of this technology is that the councils with the biggest network, with the most limited budgets, um, basically um, can afford the least amount of money on the data collection. The uh, metropolitan councils normally a bit um, uh, a, a bit more uh, financial means um, with but with smaller networks. So there is a challenge, and I would suggest that everybody who wants to discuss pricing discuss that directly with the suppliers to really discuss your, your own uh, situation. And I don't want to put people, especially in regional areas off, by mentioning price levels that might be um, suitable for metropolitan um, application. So I would, I, would, uh, I would invite you all to discuss this directly with, uh, with the uh, suppliers. Uh, Jacob uh, Davis has a question. Is the technology developed enough to have a priority re register in place? Will it not notify a person for emergency work in contrast with a small pothole? I would like to park this question if it's okay. I will explain a bit more about what we want to do next because this is, this is a very good question. And I think if we fully utilize this new technology to reimagine our practices, there is massive opportunities, but a bit more uh, after the panel uh, session. With the vision, can you set the intervention level so that only the defects that meet intervention are flicked? I, I can comment on this, uh, Arjen. So with the Vaisala Road AI system, uh, when you view the portal and view the, the pavement survey in the portal, we have a colored heat map, um, green for, for less defects and, and red for, for high defect um, or worse pavement condition. So it's quite easy just on that visual display to filter the range of defects that you want to look at. So if you only want to look at the ones where the defects are severe, you simply just slide that scale up and then most of the other heat map will then disappear and you'll only be left with the, the sort of red areas which are indicating the, um, you know, the worst defects or, or ones that meet your uh, intervention levels. Um, this type of filtering then can also be um, picked up or utilized when you feed it into the exports so that you, you get the information that you require there. Okay, thanks for that. The, um, in the, um, yeah, sorry. 
I'll go back. There's still a few comments in the um, in the uh, in the chat. If you could please copy that into the um, the Q and A. That would be good because then we can uh, we can uh, ask the questions to the panel members. Uh, Rachel uh, Jackson, is there an ability to customize what defects are collected? For example, if council has defined level of service for road maintenance, can you set the defects to be collected? Uh, which meets these levels? I think Simon um, Simon already answered the question. I think it's, uh, and, and Scott mentioned it before, uh, it, it, the output can be a CSV file with, uh, with all the details. So you can filter it and, and use it um, as you like. Has Glenn or looked look at this in more detail during the evaluation? Uh, yes, I, I would agree. I would agree with that. You can uh, all the systems we evaluated definitely have the ability to um, filter the filter the type and severity of of certain defects. Yeah, that's correct. And and as Simon mentioned, um, you do have the ability to on the map for Vaisala to. Um, customized to what what you're trying to target so if that's a certain service level then i understand that's achievable the next question is again about um about accuracy i think we uh we discussed it um jeff neil has a few questions the first one is an easy one um unsealed uh unsealed roads uh, scott or uh simon yeah yeah, I'll go Arjen if I can. Um, the, uh, our, our cameras have uh, six degree of freedom inertial sensors and we're doing a lot of work in classifying and measuring uh, unsealed road corrugation at the moment. And we're working on a, uh, a visualisation to represent that. It wasn't included in the, um, in the uh, in this evaluation, of course, but uh, yeah, we are actively doing development in this space for unsealed road assessments because we understand that there's many regional councils where uh, the only amount of sealed road is in town and 80% of the network is unsealed around, uh, around these regional areas. And uh, yeah, we, uh, there will be a uh, produced ability or a, or a marketed ability shortly for that. We, we, we've noticed in the evaluation that um, that it, it picks up defects on uh, unsealed roads. I think one of the challenges is with the um, with windscreen mounted uh, cameras that you make sure it's a proper mount that doesn't fall off the um, uh, fall off the windscreen on, the, on unsealed roads. Would you like to make an additional comment, uh, Simon? Or yeah. Gonna... So we've um, we've done work of being a Finnish uh, head office in Finland um, with the Finnish forestry industry. Um, so working with them on uh on, you know, ability to detect and maintain their roads so we do yeah we do have experience with um surveying unsealed roads um, and identifying uh, defects most of the principle the way our system works is you know you've got the whole video in the system and then you're using the tools to filter the view that you like just just like some of the earlier questions whether you want to focus on the you know detect defect severity um, so some of the classifications you can use to filter is just by road type. So, you know, whether it's asphalt, whether it's sealed, unsealed, whether it's cobblestone, et cetera. So you can turn that filter on and then see as a, at an instance what roads you've got around the network and then choose to, to sort of drill down um, with another one. So, yeah, certainly I think uh, it's you know, fair to say, that, you know, there's good experience working with unsealed roads and there's also more development to do with the unsealed roads and, and particularly knowing the user case from, from the, the users. Yeah. Thanks for that. Jeff has two more questions. So let's just go through uh, his ones. Um, is there an ability to direct the asset defects to differing databases? I think we've discussed that already with the API and the um, uh, and the CSV files as an uh, as an output. Um, has there been exploration if this if the single system can be configured for different asset owners? The council I'm involved in inspects road assets for transport for New South Wales and private customers like uh, FISI and. AKD as well as own roads. 
Um, these all have different back-end aspects like intervention codes, etc. Um, I think that that's the part of part of the answer is about the um, um, part of the answer is about the 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 the, uh, inter the relation with databases and the output uh, format. Um, every asset owner has, especially when you do transport for New South Wales roads as well, has different um, different requirements, and um, I think especially using a transport for New South Wales is one of the partners in uh, in the next phase of the projects a bit more about that uh, in a minute um, they might have they, but they have very strict uh, requirements so I think to for them to accept new source of data and a new uh, way of doing things require them to um, accept the uh, the data in their systems and um, I think that's um, that's still an, 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 a quite a hurdle I don't know if uh, Simon or Scott has had discussions with any of the uh, state road authorities yes uh, we're doing some work with RMS down at Wagga um, they've been using our systems to do manual assessments and we have been in discussion recently with the, the steering committee the TF NSW in terms of collating data uh, back into a central uh, repository. I guess to answer the question, uh, we can geo-ref, geo different road classes. So if it's a, a state managed road or a locally managed road, that information and assessments can be vetted and assessed separately. And then they could feed through a back office a separate cloud integration and go to the rep relative authorities. So it is it is possible to achieve that outcome of data moving and assessment through integrations. Uh, because the, the data isn't pushed directly from the device to the end user, it goes through an intermediary system. So we can manage that. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, then there's a few questions about um, about the, um, the technology uh, you use to collect the video footage and how much interaction there is um, required from the uh, from the driver. Um, maybe you just answer that can answer that question uh, yourself. Yeah, zero interaction from the driver for the automated aspects. Um, we do have a driver fitted system that has a um, interaction on the touch screen where defects can be touched that haven't been classified. For example, some, some obscure defect like overhanging branches that we don't currently have a, a class for, um, that could still be managed um, through touching it. And we have a feature in the system where the imagery is collected around that press so it can be select the, the money shot effectively can be selected in a back office integration by someone sitting sitting out there. But generally, it's minimum interactivity by the operators on the machines. Since we developed it for waste drivers, we didn't want to change the waste driver's mode of operation from collecting waste. So we've had to uh, uh, deploy this. And, and mind that for any waste delivered or waste deployed solutions, we only offer automated defects but the solution's also available on council asset machinery where um, operators could interact with the machine if necessary or with the device if necessary. Yeah, yeah and just, just to add from our side, the um, we can have the system running fully autonomously. Basically, once the vehicle started, it'll start recording, and when the vehicle stopped, it will stop recording. Um, we also have an annotation feature, which is generally we use with a blue... Bluetooth button, which sits on the steering wheel, so the operator doesn't need to touch the phone. A momentary press of that button will, will take a snapshot, and then that will leave an annotation on the road AI portal at that point of the road with a that you can click on and see the, the snapshot at that time and, and, and information. Um, pressing and holding the button and speaking will then record you know, the, the comment that you make about that point, and then when you're in the portal, that that conversation will be converted to text and appear against that annotation. So, yeah, so there's a few features there aimed at trying to make this, um, you know, it, it, as convenient for, for drivers as possible. 
Yeah, thanks for that. Then there's a question about the uh, the 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 upload and um, um, and processing of data. Um, I'll I'll answer that question. All the systems they store the data on uh, the camera in the car. If there is connectivity um, with 4G, then it um, it uploads it uh, to the cloud. It's processed in the cloud, not in the camera. And then the uh, data has been uh, it's made available to um, to the uh, to the councils. All um, all suppliers or anonymize the data, or make sure the data is only available to the actual client. So to your uh, uh, to your council only. That's correct, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, so I am. Yeah, our, our new new camera will do the detections on the edge. That's the only variation with that alien. But uh, presently, we're, yeah, we're doing uh, detections that are off off board, effectively the analysis. Yeah. yeah. Then the uh, there's there's two more questions. Um, um, there's two more questions. One is about uh, GIS, but I think the outputs are all location referenced, all uh, suitable to include in GIS and do overlays on all front uh, different layers. Did you look at that, uh, Glenn, or look? In the, it, you in, the, of, in the GIS system? No, we haven't looked at integration into the GIS system. Um, I suppose for myself in road asset management, we do have a, um, a PMS system with integration to the GIS. So, um, yeah, I suppose in thinking of asset managers and and um, operational staff in maintenance, um, primarily using it, they do we do typically have our own separate systems outside the GIS. Um, there may be some in terms of customer service um, functionality or benefits and having it on the GIO, GIS for, for council wide accessibility. But um, yeah, I haven't considered it in too much too much thought to be honest. I think it's safe to say that all the systems are um, are location reference and the outputs are um, in a GIS uh, format. Um, there's, there's, there's one question about the, the privacy. I, I think I just um, uh, I just answered that. Faisala blocks it. The other suppliers make you sure that the data is um, not available to uh, to third parties. Um, I do two more questions and then I'll uh, some information about the um, about the uh, the next uh, phase. Um, the uh, Said about the, the data storage. Um, all the systems store the data on the camera if there is no opportunity to upload it in uh, in real time. So it's it's there's a mix of it. Um, Marilyn has a question uh, about the um, uh, other other assess other um, condition uh, data like uh, roughness, rutting, and uh, and texture. Um, my understanding is that um, uh, that some of the suppliers are looking at um, roughness or rutting to include in the uh, in the assessments. Um, but it is an, at the moment it, it might not it, it might not include texture roughness and uh, rutting. But then in terms of your asset management planning and your routine maintenance, as long as these um, condition um, classes don't present a defect, I don't think you will do anything about plant maintenance. It's only when you start preparing plant maintenance that that information is really required. Do you have an opinion about that, uh, Glenn or Luke? Um, yeah, yeah. I would. I would just say like, I think evaluating these systems, I was I was really excited in how they work. It, it was it truly is amazing, and I think I can see the potential there to give us the opportunity to get in front of maintenance rather than just rather than just reacting all the time um, yeah there's definitely the ability for these systems to be collect collecting data for us more frequently and then you know feed that into works programs that have us ahead of 
um, you know, ahead of our scheduled maintenance. Yeah, I'd, I'd, um, I'd agree with those comments. I suppose um, for me, the, um, the most value is in the reactive uh, space, I suppose, with real-time data. Um, so it would lend itself primarily to, to maintenance and I suppose roughness and rutting aren't primarily drivers in that space. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's probably all I have to, to add for rutting and roughness. But um, yeah, I suppose in asset management, looking at you know years ahead and developing programs years ahead. Um, yeah, if we could get rutting and roughness, Every once a year, perhaps. Um, yeah, we could we could use that to complement our PMS systems. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks for that. The um, any final uh, comments from the um, from the panel members? Any final comments from you, Scott? Uh, no, uh, you know, I'm uh, just thanks again for the opportunity to participate in the trial. Thanks for that, Luke. Ah, uh, yeah, it's similar. Uh, thanks again for, for allowing uh, myself and Central Coast Council to be part of this um, this trial. So, yeah, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, similarly. I mean, yeah, look, th yeah, just like to thank uh, thank you and IPWA for the opportunity to participate, and um, yeah, just say we're we're available to help people on this journey going forward. Ajen, you've been quiet. You've done you've done most of the work in the evaluation. Anything from you? Uh, no, yeah. Um, it's been a really um, exciting project, I think, bringing together the suppliers and uh, with the council. So I think it's an um, ongoing collaboration that um, with the questions that you guys had throughout this webinar as well, um, it's been something that we've been trying to incorporate in the valuation. So um, if um, yeah, encourage you to have a look at the valuation report as well if you have further questions or send them through to us so we can be um, happy to answer them. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Glenn? Glenn, any last words from you? Sorry. Um, no, not much. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next steps. And I think the thing that interests me most next is learning about how these systems learn. So... I saw functionality in it when I was evaluating it, and I'm looking forward to seeing how, um, you know, the user's input then helps uh, improve the way the systems work. Okay, thanks for that. Thanks all. I've I've got a few slides um, for um, to explain what we're do, going to do in the next phase. So, anybody who's interested, please stay on and um, and uh, and watch it. Thanks all. I'll share my uh, my my screen again, um, and the the next stage is um, is potentially uh, even more excited than what we've got uh, we've got now. I also may already mentioned that we've got um, uh, new technology, and we can try to um, adopt the technology in our current uh, practices, but we could also utilize this opportunity to re-imagine the way we do um, uh, asset management at the moment. So we are aiming to um, create asset AI um, to really utilize the opportunities. And for this next phase, um, we will partner with um, Transport for New South Wales and the same councils that were involved in, um, in the trial, Kentry Bankstown, George's River, Blaney and uh, Central Coast Council. And in the middle, you see Code for Australia. Code for Australia is a not-for-profit uh, with the purpose to bring technology providers and government together to create a 21st century digital uh, government. So these are the, 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 the project partners. And the whole idea of asset AI is to fully automate the whole process. So collect uh, video footage automatically, do the automated detection of asset condition in real time, have real time a real time databases and use um, bespoke predictive algorithms to optimize asset planning and uh, work programs. 
always the idea to deliver better infrastructure to the community. So basically the idea is to automate as much of the process as possible to inform asset managers to, um, yeah, to make the right and the best decisions uh, possible. So asset AI will um, use uh, a lot of inputs and produce um, outputs. The gray is uh, conventional inputs. The, um, I would say orange is uh, new processes and then the green is supported processes. And uh, um, we've also identified a possible uh, future uh, process. In light green, you, for instance, you see um, safety assessments the, the current technology can be used to automatically detect uh, roadside hazards or, or other inputs used for, um, for root uh, risk assessments. I'll go through it uh, quickly. The, um, the known and current available inputs are asset registered, uh, known asset condition data, asset um, inspection data, and um, customer movement data, like, like traffic data. We will utilize uh, new processes and input. That's the um, real-time automated asset inventory data. Like we described in the, uh, in the trial evaluation, the technology is suitable to, um, to automatically detect uh, inventory, like guardrails, signage, line marking. Um, and then, of course, there is the real-time automated asset uh, condition data. And Fren, in the introduction, mentioned the um, road inspection um, manual. We've introduced a risk-based approach to managing uh, defects. A bit more on the next slide. But that's uh, part of the uh, uh, new sources of data. So the real-time asset inventory data, just a few examples. The technology picks up um, uh, signs, guardrails, line marking. So that's all available uh, as inputs. The asset um, uh, condition data, all the systems pick up uh, potholes, bent guardrails, um, cracking, um, all sorts of um, condition, uh, asset condition data or, uh, or defects. The risk-based approach, um, I've mentioned it before, uh, but what, we've, um, what we suggest for councils to use, instead of using an, an, a response time, is an, um, a, a, a risk-based approach. And we have um, came up with, an, uh, with a method to um, calculate defect priority scores based on the road hierarchy and the actual uh, risk that each, um, each defect uh, presents. So a pothole in an arterial road has a priority um, score of two in a local collector uh, six. So you end up with a list of defects and priority scores. It's very easy to uh, prioritize what defects to um, repair first. Um, the output is... Um, uh, Plant maintenance and um, responsive or uh, routine maintenance. In the uh, in the in the project, we've identified um, five project phases. The whole project will um, will take us uh, two years. But the idea is that after um, after a year and a, or a year and a few months, we will have an, uh, a beta version that we will, uh, we will test. And hopefully in two years time, we will have a system that's um, ready to be used by all councils in New South Wales, or even in the whole of Australia at quite minimal, uh, minimal cost. So in the, in the, in the, in the, um, in, in the project phases, um, we, we, there's a lot of detail, but we will start with a pre-discovery and a discovery phase to really understand the possibilities and to make sure that um, the, the system we design is really tailored for um, local government. And it's not an 
replacement of any commercial um, uh, system available. It's really to make it work, uh, work, work all together. So our purpose is our our, um, our aim is not to duplicate anything. Our aim is really to utilize everything that's available and create an, 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 an a layer sort of on top of it to make sure it works all together and it um, it really helps us um, uh, to do a better job and to um, to be more effective in uh, how we spend the money, early detection and um, and early interventions. So the supported strategies that's New South Wales uh, strategies, um, the smart places strategy, premiers priorities. Definitely the innovation strategy, the um, future transport strategy, and the future transport uh, technology uh, map. We've applied for funding from the Smart Places Acceleration Fund. That's a funding made available by the New South Wales uh, Department of Planning and Environment. And it is really quite exciting. We are now, um, it's been approved by the um, by the assessment panel, so we're just waiting for sign off from the steering committee and uh, and cabinet. Um, so it is really likely that this will um, really happen. So that's all um, that um, I wanted to share with uh, you today. Thanks all for attending the um, the webinar. And if you have any uh, further questions, please send an email to myself or um, Arjen and we'll respond to it. Uh, the best email to use is rtd at ipwea.newsouthwales.org. Thanks for uh, attending the webinar. I hope you all um, enjoyed it and learned something from it today and hope to see you all soon.